here to expand on our profession and the profound impact it continues having on the lives of the people we serve all around this globe. It's my distinct honor to introduce FPA's president and the man who pumps life into FPA's heart every day, Mr. Mark Johannesson. Thank you, Mark, for that flattering introduction. And before you rush off the stage, I'd like to, enter, to recognize you for your dedication as the leader of the task force that for this year's conference. I know that you, along with the, all of the task force members, have planned a great event, and everyone in this room will absolutely enjoy it. Many thanks to you for all of your hard work. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. Thank you. Break it. Thank you. Well, hello, FPA, and welcome to Boston. Some of you may have questioned your attendance here this week, so I really thank you for being here. You should be complimented for your commitment to being an even better resource to your clients. As you've just heard, the theme for this year is revolutionary th thinking. Appropriate, I believe, considering Boston was a flashpoint in the American Revolution and in the wake of recent market developments, considering how the entire financial services industry is seemingly undergoing a realignment of revolutionary scale. Over the last several weeks, we've all heard we're living in historic times. And the financial, plan the financial landscape is morphing as we speak. And people are nervous and uncertain and certainly scared. As a result, many of us have been asked to make some sense of the insanity and to provide context in a tumultuous time. Every one of us has done, has done that. We've made a positive impact on the lives of our clients and the psyche of the broader public. Again, I'm reminded of the people who rose to become the heroes of the American Revolution. They weren't aiming for a place in the history books. Rather, they were merely working to right the wrongs of the time. And though our challenges more than two centuries later are quite different, we too live in a world that needs our wisdom and guidance to help it thrive and prosper. Over the past few decades, our profession has emerged as a reliable source for financial service expertise, enhanced by wisdom, common sense, clarity, and transparency. Rooted in such fundamentals, the time to become more of a force has arrived. If the SEC lawsuit was, was FPA shot heard around the world, then the standards of professional conduct recently revi revised by the CFP board should be considered our Declaration of Independence. <laughs> After all, this is a document that binds us and guides us toward providing people throughout the world with a chance to fulfill their lifelong goals and dreams. Furthermore, FPA is an inclusive community, open to all who are willing to follow these standards of professional conduct lost, I'm sure, in the headlines of today, was an announcement regarding a new standard of care for financial planning professionals passed by the FPA Board of Directors recently. This standard of care outlines what each and every current, potential, and future client should expect to receive from any financial planning professional. I'd like to publicly acknowledge the hard work done over the past two years by a diverse group of volunteers and FPA staff to develop this standard of care. We all owe a debt of gratitude to this group for spending countless hours researching, debating, and reaching out to various constituencies within and outside the profession. Their work was invaluable in developing this code of professional conduct. And please, join me in a round of applause for this group. Thank you. And now consider the core tenets of our new standard of care. Put the client's best interests first. Act with due care and in utmost good faith. Do not mislead clients. Provide full and fair disclosure of all material facts. And disclose and fairly manage all material conflicts of interest. Now those are impactful guidelines especially if you put yourself in the shoes of the client or prospect who doesn't know much about our profession. Outside this room, you will be able to review and sign our standard of care. The opportunity to enlighten clients is a big reason 
I am thrilled to adopt the FPA standard of care. By following this set of principles, financial planning professionals are publicly willing to take accountability and responsibility for their actions as trusted advisors on behalf of their clients who are seeking confidence in that sacred trust. Additionally, the standard of care creates a common language among all of us FPA members. This is quite powerful, I believe, because for the first time, it eliminates a divisive force that has festered within our membership. As we all adopt the standard of care, no longer will you question the intent of your crosstown financial planning competitors. Now, you still may disagree with their advice or tactics, but you can't challenge whether they're acting in the best interest of their client. And while I'm not shy about my excitement for the standard of care, I do understand that, the, that such fiduciary responsibilities represent significant change in operations for a portion of our membership. These member measures could introduce new legal and compliance issues that may seem burdensome. If you find yourself in this camp, FPA is here to help, most immediately in the form of FPA's Best Practices Task Force. Comprised of members from a wide cross-section of business and compensation models, this group is exploring the most common scenarios and situations where fiduciary standards and actions and in actions in the client's best interest may be difficult to interpret. Offering guidance primarily through tools and checklists, the task force mission is to help you live within a fiduciary world while serving the best interests of your clients. Now some of you may be wondering, why bother? Why expend volumes of energy to formalize something that many of us already may be doing in some form? Why? because I believe we need to raise the bar, set a higher standard that applies to all financial professionals and not just FPA members. Then we can demand that others raise the bar to ensure consumer confidence and trust in anyone involved in the financial services sphere. In essence, to our regulators and elected officials, I say, raise the bar. To our insurance colleagues, raise the bar. To the brokerage community, raise the bar. To accounting professionals, raise the bar. To those in the mortgage industry, raise the bar. And to all, to all involved in any way advising people on how to manage their money, I say, raise the bar. Face it, there is no time better than now, especially as, as we contend with a financial market crisis of monumental proportions to strive for the betterment of all of those who seek to thrive and prosper. That, my colleagues, is today's version of the glorious cause. Now, unlike the nation-building challenges undertaken by this country's founders, profession-building rarely involves the loss of life. That said, it's unusual for anything of value to be achieved with, without significance or significant sacrifice. Our revolution for financial planning has come a long way, yet it's far from being finished. Our shot around, heard around the world has reverberated in many countries across the globe, 27 of which are represented here in Boston today. Although I know many of you in this room have already contributed significantly to the advancement of the profession, we all must understand that the citizens of our world are collectively seeking freedom from the tyranny that, forces, that the forces of the marketplace can impose upon us. And while many are currently benefiting from the comfort and peace of mind that solid financial planning can provide, there are millions more entrenched in a battle for survival. It's not every day that people have an opportunity to do something that will change the world. But by working to make the eternal quest for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness more fulfilling, more meaningful, and more enjoyable, I believe each of, each of us can contribute to accomplishing the glorious cause of the 21st century. Thank you very much for your attention.